We've always done things differently and we are not followers but leaders. We have a lot of world records in the, in the watch history and we've taken risks in the history of watchmaking. This is where we are today, this is where we are yesterday, and this is where we will be tomorrow. We go back to basics. Sometimes we think that we have to reinvent the wheel. It's not a matter of reinventing the wheel, it's just a matter of respecting the basic rules of business, which are having an amazing product, having an amazing partners to basically sell the product, uh, or our own boutiques to do it, and uh, surrounded by an, uh, an intense work on quality and uh, innovation. Always thinking forward, never standing still, making sure that it's not because we've had a success that we're going to uh, sit on it and say, we are done, uh, now we can be a little bit more easy on ourselves. It's much more a matter of saying, okay, we've done something great, what's next? First of all, I would never look at the fact that there are more companies making complications as bad news. I look at this as good news for one reason. It opens the world and the eyes of more people to the art of high-end watchmaking. But the most important thing is because we have a legitimacy, because we've been making complicated watches since 1875, then at the end people can make choices, and, but they always come back to us at one point. So yes, they could, they could be attracted by a complication from a new company, but if we do the things right and the right things, we have a real, uh, a real card to play in this world because we have a complete legitimacy that people recognize every day. We are not a mature industry at all, which means we, we, I would say we are pretty much 15 to 20 years bef uh, behind the automobile industry. As a perfect example, I always say today when people have money and money to afford nice cars or nice houses or nice watches, okay, a lot of them, they have one or two houses. They have maybe one, two or three cars. They don't all have nice watches. Why? Because they have not been exposed to it most of the time. Does it mean that we could sell high-end watches to everybody? No. Does it mean that we have a long way to go before we reach a sort of first level? Oh yes. Yes, we speak about uh, the Ryder Oak a lot, but it's our number one seller. A lot of brands actually would love to have a Ryder Oak in their collection, but it's much more a matter now of spreading uh, the, the, the things a bit differently. First of all, the brand is Audemars Piguet, it's not Ryder Oak, and we're going to focus a lot of efforts in the years to come on Audemars Piguet and what the other collection could, could be. So we've got the Ryder Oak, we've got the Ryder Oak Offshore, we've got the Ryder Oak Concept, but then we have the Millenary that we're uh, working on uh, as uh, quickly as we can because we have a lot of good things coming up. Then we'll have, a, we have our own classical line, then we'll bring a new ladies line to the market in the years to come. There are a lot of things in, in, uh, which is a work in progress right now. So if we speak about markets, first of all, it's not to put all our eggs in the same basket. I mean, some brands have made, made choices to go in certain directions over the last five to ten years. We've decided since day one to say we want to have our sales spread pretty much equally across the globe, which is important because just in case uh, country goes down a little bit in sales, we can offset it by a country that would go up. In terms of our clients, we, get, we have to know them better, we have to service them better, and it's going to be a major shift compared to what we are before and what we are doing now. Before, we, we started as being wholesalers. We are manufacturing watches and selling watches to distributors. Then we bought back our distribution, so now we are our own distributors. Now we have the end consumer, the client at the end of the line that wears, is passionate about our watches and we have to make sure that he remains a fan, he keeps, he keeps the momentum going for the company and we keep communicating with him in the right way. I've always loved Yoda. Yoda is a sort of a little person that people looked at and, and thought that he was just an old person and pretty ugly and nothing special about him, when actually he's the ultimate force, which I like. It's the understated strength force that you could deal with, which is why I've got a lot of Yoda figurines in my office. I've got a, one of his quotes on my door.